Welcome in to Outkick the Show Friday edition. I hope all of you are having fantastic Fridays wherever you may be. Rejoice College Football officially starts tomorrow. You can dive in. We can all have a gangbuster time. I'm going to give you a couple of gambling picks here uh, in the uh, Florida-Miami game as well as in the Hawaii-Arizona game. Those are both going on tomorrow. Uh, Let me give you a rundown of where we're headed. Uh, The disaster that was the 80-yard football field last night in the NFL. Daniel Jones mania takes over. Uh, ACC Network has officially launched. Is it a good uh, business proposition right now or not? My 8-year-old has become a Braves fan. Should I tell him about what happens in October? Uh, And Zeke has evidently had an offer to become the second paid running back, highest paid running back of all time. So, I appreciate all of you uh, for spending your time with me. Let's dive right into Florida, Miami and to Arizona, Hawaii. My two gambling picks, all right? Two gambling picks right off the top of the show today. I love the other, the under in Florida, Miami. I think the defenses are going to dominate. Both offensive lines have been remade. I don't believe in Felipe Franks. you got a redshirt freshman quarterback who's attempted three passes in his career starting for Miami. And I believe Jaron Williams is his name. And as a result, I think the defenses are going to dominate. Toss in also the fact it's the first game of the season. It's going to be swelteringly hot in Orlando. This is going to be a low-scoring game. Take the under. The Gators have ticked out to around 7 or 7.5. In a low-scoring game, I don't really like either side here. Dan Mullen playing with house money, sitting at 10-3, and three, top 10 already in year two. Stat I'd love to share with all of you is... Every coach that has won an SEC title in the conference title game era over 25 years now has won at least nine games by year two. Dan Mullen already won 10 in year one. Under is the play in Florida, Miami, which will be taking place tomorrow, I believe, at 7 Eastern. After that game, late night, late night from Hawaii, I'm telling you that the play is to take the over. These numbers continue to tick up. Hawaii, Arizona is an 8.30, what time is it? I think 10.30 Eastern start all the way out in Arizona. And I believe it's going to make a big difference that Khalil Tate is back 100% healthy. Last year, Hawaii played two teams that were in the top 25. Utah State, Fresno State. They both scored over 50. I think Arizona goes for 50 plus. I think this number goes over 80 Get the over there. Those are my two gambling picks to start off college football week. Zero, boom, there you go. All right, I am over the NFL preseason. The NFL preseason has become one of the worst aspects of the entire American sporting calendar. And I thought that the uh, 80-yard field that we got in Winnipeg last night in the game between the Green Bay Packers and the Oakland Raiders was a perfect metaphor for what preseason football in the NFL has become like. First of all, the NFL shouldn't go outside of the United States for games. Last year, they went south of the border. They tried to play the Rams and the Chiefs game in Mexico City, and the field was so crappy that at the last moment, they called an audible and decided to play it at the Coliseum in LA. This year, they decided to go to Winnipeg, and the field is so crappy in the end zone that they only play on 80-yard fields. I'm a season ticket holder in the NFL. The fact that we are charged full freight for two crappy preseason games where the best players don't even play at all and the younger coaches don't even play their guys at all following the Sean McVay model. In fact, 20-some-odd Raiders didn't even make the trip to Winnipeg. Sean McVay didn't take 20 players with him to Honolulu for the preseason game out there. Here is an easy question for anybody out there that defends the NFL preseason. How is it that Florida and Miami can play a game and there will be tons of 18-year-olds who last played a football game in high school and they will be able to play a big-time rivalry game to kick off the season? How is it that Bo Nix, who is a true freshman, next week he's going to make his first start against Oregon and his last start will have been in high school But people being paid millions of dollars a year who play pro football year-round, who go to mini camps, who are training all year-round, 
aren't ready to go week one despite the fact that they are multi-year veterans often of their sport. It doesn't make any sense. It's completely illogical. There's no way to justify the NFL preseason. It needs to go away. It needs to give up the ghost. It needs to become like the BCS and die. It's illogical. It makes no sense. And that 80-yard field in Canada last night in Winnipeg was the perfect approximation of why the NFL preseason makes no sense. We also had, last night, if you do decide to play a star, you're risking everything for nothing with what happened with Cam Newton. Cam Newton is lucky. It doesn't appear that he's going to be severely injured based on the leg uh, and the left ankle injury that he got. But why in the world are any starters on the field getting dinged up in a game that doesn't matter at all. You know how college kids have started sitting out of bowl games and basically teaching, treating them as if they are, uh, uh, you know, exhibition games, which is what they are. Why in the world would any starter play in a preseason football game? Why in the world would any coach put his starters in a preseason football game? Let them roll out week one. Even if they're a little bit rusty, they won't be as rusty as college football players are. And in college football, they start and hit the ground running with massive games in game one. Also, somebody just said it in the comments. Incredibly dirty hit from Eric Reed on uh, Ben Watson. Ben Watson criticized Eric Reed based on the way that Eric Reed has called Colin Kaepernick a sellout and everything else. You can't tell me that that totally indefensible hit wasn't directly related to the dispute off the field between those guys. Eric Reed should be suspended for at least one game, maybe multiple games. It needs to happen. Uh, And so that is my takeaway on the NFL preseason. It is an abject failure. It's time to replace it. What would you replace it with? I would expand the postseason. I'd go with 16 teams making the NFL postseason instead of 12. I would do away with any of the bye weeks. Go to 16 teams making the NFL preseason. I mean, sorry, NFL postseason. And I would potentially argue for two more games. If you can only get one more game, that's fine. One more real game is worth more than four preseason games. I think that would make a lot of sense. I want the season longer. I want the games uh, to go on for as long as they possibly can. Uh, College football and the NFL don't have long enough seasons as it is. Uh, I would add more bye weeks. Somebody said you can't get rid of the bye week. No, wait. Add more bye weeks. I don't understand why you play 16 weeks and only have one NFL bye week. Everybody gets one bye week now. Add multiple bye weeks. Start the NFL in mid-August and run it all the way until President's Day weekend. My argument is that the Super Bowl should always be played on this Sunday before President's Day weekend so that Monday is a holiday for much of the rest of the country. You can also expand NFL rosters. There's only 53 people on an NFL roster. It was at 45 that dress out. Something like 45. I may be a player or two off there. Look at the sideline of an NFL game. Almost everybody who dresses plays. Expand the rosters. Let more guys play. And that way allow more uh, games overall to actually be in place. I don't understand why that doesn't make complete sense. And also, if you're going to play Thursday night football... Every team that plays on Thursday night football should get a bye week before they play on Thursday night football, right? I mean, I don't know. This is this is, is non this is perfect logic for me. If you're worried about the short week and about how guys are going to perform playing on Thursday night football, go ahead and add a bye week before that Thursday night football week so you got more time to get ready and then when you play on Thursday, you got more days to get ready. This is just basic Basic, basic logic here. I'm just trying to make a world a better place one uh, one little idea at a time. All right, this is wild. The most criticized player in the entire 2019 NFL draft was Daniel Jones. I'm not sure that there was anybody who got criticized more than Daniel Jones in the last decade based on the NFL draft. Daniel Jones by himself may have gotten more criticism than the rest of the picks in the first round did combined. So what has he done to respond to that criticism including from Baker Mayfield this week? Daniel Jones, this is according to NFL Research, is uh, has an 83.3 completion percentage so far in the, in the preseason. 
12.3 yards per attempt and a 140.1 passer rating. Those numbers are the highest in a rookie preseason since at least 2006 and he has dominated. He has absolutely dominated uh, everybody else in recent history Baker Mayfield, Patrick Mahomes, Eli Manning all of those guys paled in comparison to what Daniel Jones has been capable of doing. And if you saw in the postseason, uh, postgame there was an incredible photo of Eli Manning putting on his shoes while Daniel Jones was covered by a huge crowd of media. The New York Post which ridiculed the selection of Daniel Jones in an unbelievable about face is now calling him the star of the Giants. It's wild to see how far already perception has twisted and shifted on Daniel Jones. So uh, this mania is officially underway. I don't know how long it's going to be till he starts but Eli and the Giants better win early or the demand for Daniel Jones is going to get louder and louder. Uh, Okay, the ACC Network launched. The ACC Network launched and there's a lot of discussion about who's carrying the ACC Network and who isn't. I, boiler point, right off the top here, bold face, I believe the ACC Network is launching too late in the decline of the cable and the satellite industry. I think it makes no sense uh, at all for the ACC to be putting out a brand new cable and uh, c- cable and satellite network. I think it will be the last one ever launched by ESPN. They are launching a channel into a rapidly crippling market for overall sports broadcast networks. What the ACC should have done is they should have sold their rights to the ESPN Plus digital network and started working on their digital streaming game plan instead of trying to copy what the SEC and the Big Ten did. The Pac-12 network is a disaster. The SEC and the Big Ten got it completely right. They launched at the ideal time. But this is, I think, a messy situation. I asked you guys on Twitter how many of you want the ACC network. Over 20,000 of you voted. I said, would you change your cable or satellite provider? 93% of you said you would not. 93% of you said you would not change your cable or satellite provider. They've got Thursday of next week Georgia Tech going up against Clemson. Problem is Clemson's a 35 plus point favorite but this is what they sell on the games that you should care about that are going to be on the ACC network after that one. Virginia Tech Boston College Virginia Pitt South Florida at Georgia Tech Miami at North Carolina Kansas at Boston College Florida State at Virginia these quotes here these are considered the big ones by the ESPN website if these guys are the big games this ain't good enough All right, I think the ACC network is going to have a lot more in common with the Pac-12 network I think it's going to be hard to get Comcast hard to get Dish Hard to get Cox Cable all of them to start carrying this network because right now all of these cable and satellite companies are under siege from cord cutting and the last thing they want to do is add an expensive channel to their basic tier that requires everybody to pay more and lowers their overall profit margin. Again, these are the games that they cited as the reason the big games that you want to make sure you don't miss after Georgia Tech Clemson. Virginia Tech Boston College Virginia Pitt South Florida at Georgia Tech Miami at North Carolina Kansas at Boston College Florida State at Virginia. Now I'm not saying that if you're a fan of those teams you should not watch your team. But first of all you can sign up for a streaming service easily and you can sign up a month at a time. So if you know that your team is going to play a couple of games in September go sign up for Sling or YouTube or PlayStation View or whatever one of these channels is where it's carried watch it for a month pay $15 and then cancel. That's all you have to do if your cable or satellite provider doesn't carry it now. Unlike your cable and satellite subscription which requires a longer term commitment for streaming services you can sign up one month and cancel the next month. So why wouldn't you just sign up 
to watch the games that you want to watch at your home and then cancel right after. That seems like it makes a ton of sense to me. Okay? And if you don't want to do that, you can obviously go out to a sports bar or wherever else you want to go see, uh, go see, check them out. And again, I will gamble on some of these games. I love college football, but I have Comcast. There's a 0% chance that I am canceling my cable service over the ACC network. I don't really care enough. So if I had been advising the ACC, I would have said you don't want to launch a channel into the collapsing cable and satellite bundle. You want to think ahead and go start a digital network with everybody able to stream it on ESPN Plus and pay whatever it is, $5 a month to be an ESPN Plus subscriber. I think that makes a lot of sense. Last night, last night I'm watching the Braves game against the Marlins with my 8-year-old. My 8-year-old has become a huge, huge fan of the Atlanta Braves. Big baseball fan of late. Got to go watch the Braves play the Mets. He's become a massive Atlanta Braves fan. And last night, he was ecstatic when Ronald Acuna hit a walk-off single to beat the Florida Marlins in the back of the, in the bottom of the ninth. They are a fun team to watch. Here is my question for everybody out there. Should I let my son know about the disasters that are going to come in October because he's totally clueless about how bad the Braves have been in October for the last 25 years or whatever the heck it is. In 1995, the Atlanta Braves won the World Series. Ever since then, other than that, they have managed to lose all the time in October. Absolute, unmitigated October disaster for the Atlanta Braves. Do I dent his enthusiasm by saying, enjoy the regular season, little man, but come October, the Braves fall apart faster than... Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the team that falls apart the most. Faster than, uh, faster than Chinese basketball going up against the United States in the Olympics, all right? Faster than a really bad basketball team against the United States in the Olympics, all right? Better analogy could be used there. The Braves totally fall apart. Braves are good, but do I let him know about the history of the Braves or do I let him think that they're going to win the World Series and that October is going to be a beautiful thing? It's a challenging decision for a dad to make when it comes to what to tell your 8-year-old son who doesn't know any of the storied and often very disappointing October history of the Atlanta Braves over the years. i got to make a decision sooner or later. As we move into September, I'll make a decision. Uh, I think it's going to be right now in the World Series. I would go with... They're they're the favorites right now, right? I would go with a rematch of the Dodgers and the Astros as what I think is the most likely outcome uh, in Major League Baseball. But this is a good dad question for everybody. Do you tell him about the October failures of the Atlanta Braves or let him believe there is no history other than the history he knows? Great fan question. I got to figure out what exactly to do. Finally, Ezekiel Elliott has turned down the Dallas Cowboy team offer to make him the second highest paid running back in the NFL. This is an utterly ridiculous decision by Ezekiel Elliott. He has two years left on his contract. He is getting huge dollars which are not justified based on the value of the running back position right now. Le'Veon Bell got outperformed by James Conner who makes $500,000 to Le'Veon Bell's $14 million. In the postseason, C.J. Anderson, a fat dude who wasn't even on a roster, outperformed Todd Gurley who's the highest paid running back in the NFL right now. Jerry Jones needs to be smarter than this. He doesn't need to pay Ezekiel Elliott even as much as he is offered right now. That is ridiculous. All right, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and I think the Dallas Cowboys need to adopt a tougher line here. They paid Jalen Smith. They're going to have to pay Dak Prescott. They're going to have to pay Amari Cooper. It doesn't make sense to pay a running back $13 million a year, $12 million a year, $14 million a year. Walk away, Jerry Jones. Let Tony Pollard, Memphis's fourth round draft pick running back that you have, run behind that Dallas Cowboy offensive line. He will do incredibly well for you and a lot of people will legitimately be saying instead of it in joking fashion, Zeke who? 
All right, I love all of you. It's Friday. Again, the gambling picks. I love the under in Florida, Miami. I like the over in Arizona against Hawaii. Appreciate all of you hanging out with me. If you enjoy the show, share it with your friends. We'll be live on Lock It In, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30, uh, 3.30 Central, 2.30 Mountain, 1.30 Pacific here in uh, what? A little over two hours from now. Appreciate all of you hanging out with me. Go listen to Joel Klatt on the Wins and Losses podcast. Give me five stars and write a funny review and I'll read some of them on the air here soon. Rachel Benetta is going to be the guest this coming week. It'll be up on Sunday morning. Look forward to watching games with you. Thanks for hanging. My name is Clay Travis. God bless America. College football is back. Enjoy the Gators and the Hurricanes and Arizona and Hawaii. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP. I'll see you guys.